Hello. So you may have heard about the manifestation program, TBM or to be magnetic and wondered like, is this a scam? Is this a cult? I certainly wondered that when I first heard of it. And even when I first started doing it, I was still like, is this a cult? I think I told people that I had joined a cult for like three months. So today I'm going to tell you my real thoughts after doing TBM consistently, more or less, for a year. Yesterday was my year anniversary. I'm also gonna tell you about the things that I manifested since I started, and some of them are like actually insane and really made me believe in this. If you're new here, hello, my name is Colleen. I am a music maker, a freelancing coach, and a recovering girl boss. And on this channel we talk about trying to live your best life as a neuro spicy person based on human design spirituality and astrological principles <laughs> i'm still kind of workshopping what this channel is about so like it's vaguely that Okay, so let's start with what is TBM. TBM stands for To Be Magnetic. It's a manifestation program. And I'm just gonna tell you how their website describes it because I feel like it's very succinct and accurate. To Be Magnetic's unique manifestation process is backed by neuroscience, psychology, EMDR, epigenetics, and energetics with a little spirituality sprinkled on top. Our method is based on raising your self-worth and stepping into your unique authenticity by reprogramming the subconscious limiting beliefs you picked up during childhood and throughout your life. It's an app on your phone. Inside of the membership, when you get like the year long membership, you have all your different workshops and then each workshop has like steps in it. Like some of them are like information and some of them are journaling exercises and some things are are deep imaginings, which are guided meditations, which is where you do the neural reprogramming. <sighs> There's one where you're supposed to like email people that are close to you and be like, what do you think is holding me back? I've never done that before because I'm scared to do it, but I should do it. That's probably why I should do it. The ones that you're supposed to start with are how to manifest where they like teach you their process. I found the process like kind of hard to get the hang of at first. I'm like, what are they talking about? There's like a lot of like lingo and like principles that I wasn't really familiar with, but now I have the hang of it. I mean, the ones that like people are like most interested in are Unblocked Money and Unblocked Love, which are the ones that I'm working on now. And let me tell you, it's been illuminating. I've been learning a lot about myself. They also recommend that you find a manifestation buddy through their community, or you could work with a friend IRL who's also doing the work. So I, I guess I have two manifestation buddies. One, her name is Maria and she lives in Germany and we met through serendipitous online circumstances, which are which were crazy. And then my other manifestation buddy is my friend Shelby who lives in LA. I was telling her about this program and was like, you should really try this because she was going through a difficult time and now she's also into it. The other thing about TBM is they like recommend that you keep track of everything. Like you're keeping track of your blocks, which are your negative limiting beliefs and your triggers, which are like things that like upset you in an outsized amount, like it shouldn't be that upsetting to you. And your manifestations, of course, and like any pings that you get, which is when you like just have like a feeling that you're supposed to do something and then aligned action, which is when you like do something that is gonna like help you go down the path of your manifestation. So I think it can be really confusing to keep track of all this stuff. I use Notion for this. So I have a free template, like what I use for Notion for TBM and I'll link that below. I think it's been really helpful, but like you also, you don't need to use Notion. Like you could just use like a, a journal. They sell a journal. I, I don't have it. You could just use paper. <laughs> you don't need to get all crazy and have Notion, but I just like to be organized. I wanna talk about why I started doing TBM. I felt like I kind of hit a wall with therapy. I've been seeing a therapist since 2019. I believe therapy is important and it has really 
really helped me. Like therapy helped me to quit drinking, quit doing drugs. I also have a video about how I quit drinking up here, but I just like got to the point where I felt like I wasn't making that much progress anymore. My therapist would tell me that a lot of my behaviors were caused by low self-esteem, but there was like, there was no solution for like having better self-esteem. Like that was just something that was supposed to come with time, I guess. I still see my therapist, by the way. And we do EMDR too, which I think is really helpful, especially in combination with TBM. I needed like concrete exercises, like to help me raise my self-worth. Like that was something I was really struggling with. Yeah, I feel like TBM has given me the tools to do that. And really feeling worthless is at the core of so many of my issues. In some ways, therapy made that worse because then I felt like I had all these problems. Like when I started therapy, I was like, oh, I'm just like, I feel sad sometimes. And then after four years of therapy, well then it's like, oh, you're an alcoholic and you're neurodivergent and you have CPTSD. That just made me feel worse about myself. I felt like I had all these problems, all these labels on me instead of like feeling better about myself. I was like, well, now who would want to date me like I'm a mess. I know I project a lot of confidence. People say that to me, but deep down, like I've just pretty much always hated myself and felt like I had to force myself to do better and better to get people to like me. I feel like I'm making progress on that. Anyways, I don't know if I'm gonna keep all of that in this video. That's extremely personal, but maybe it would be helpful to someone. So I was kind of feeling stuck in therapy, like to the point where when I did my goal setting for 2023, I was like, I'm not gonna try to improve myself anymore. I'm giving up. Like, I feel like this isn't working. And then I read this really cheesy book. Let me find it. This cheesy book, I mean, so cheesy, right? Real girl boss energy here. I don't even remember buying this book. I don't know where it came from. But I read that book and in that book, the author was talking about like negative beliefs that you have that like hold you back from achieving what you want. And in her case, like that means like financial success. I like wrote down this huge list and was like, oh my God, like I have a lot inside of me that is like pushing success away from me. TBM has a podcast called The Expanded Podcast and I'd been listening to it for years. I, I was very triggered by it. The founder of TBM, her name is Lacey. I was so triggered by her for such a long time. I would like subscribe to the podcast and then unsubscribe and then subscribe because I was like so annoyed with her. Recently, I found out that we have the same birthday. So I'm like, hmm, I guess that maybe I was projecting. Um, <laughs> anyways, I noticed in that book, there was like a lot of the same terminology. Like you have these blocks. I knew that TBM helped with that. So then I was like, well, I'll just try it. I don't have anything to lose. It's like $30 a month. Why not? And also I wanted to get into meditation and I had I had been trying to meditate for a long time, but I really struggled with like focusing. I was already like interested in guided meditations. So the fact that this has a lot of guided meditations was appealing to me. And then I also had a friend who did this program for a little bit and she thought it was helpful. And I had, I asked her some questions about it and I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna try it, whatever. I'll try it. I feel like if you've been following this channel for the past year, you may have noticed how much I've changed. Obviously, I only show like a little bit of my life on YouTube, especially when I take long breaks from posting, but it is remarkable to me how different I was in videos a year ago. Like I just watched a vlog from this time last year and I'm like, who is that? I looked like Edna Mode from The Incredibles. I don't know what I was doing with my hair. I think first I'm gonna list like the things I manifested on the material plane and I'm just gonna go through like a long list of things pretty quickly. The perfect rug for my living room for under $250. I got a really good deal on a brand new, nice piano. My best friend gave me the perfect magnetic screen door for my balcony. 
my neighbors gave me vegetable plants, I received my first YouTube paycheck, I made a lot more money than usual in Q2 2023, which allowed me to build up my FU fund so I could take time off from work and figure out what the hell I'm doing with my life. A free round trip ticket to Tokyo. I don't know if you can tell, but my script is right next to the camera. A romantic relationship. It was brief, but it was a great learning experience. My health improved drastically, but that required me to spend a lot of time and money on myself. And I don't think I would have been open to doing that if I hadn't been doing TBM. I found several resources that finally got me organized as a manifesting generator, neurodivergent Aquarius person, which I should do a video on that. The CBD company I order from sent me the same order twice, but only charged me once. Maybe this is TMI, but my nasal polyps healed. <laughs> I was given a year to get better. If the polyps didn't heal, I was gonna have to get surgery, but they got better, so I didn't have to get surgery. Due to a weird thing with paperwork, I don't, my, my dog has insurance, okay? Her insurance company reimbursed me nearly $700 for her spaying surgery, which was crazy. I received several free tickets to concerts. Um, um, I had, I want a free massage on my list and my mom gave me this like shoulder massage thing that I love. I met some amazing people who work locally in the music industry. I finally reached 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. I had to have a biopsy done and it turned out to be benign. So everything is great with that. I got my first Patreon supporter. Shout out to Carrie Ann. One of my songs went viral on TikTok and I got a big tax return, which is great because I need the money. So I know this sounds like I just made a list of everything good that happened to me over the past year and maybe I I did. What's wrong with that? But I want to tell you about the two craziest manifestations. These two things that happened recently was I was like, oh fuck. <laughs> This works. All right, so uh, during the pandemic, I was watching Taskmaster on YouTube every day. Taskmaster is a UK game show and it's so funny. I just fell in love with it. It's so clever. I wrote somewhere on some list that I wanted to win Taskmaster. Not really thinking that that could ever happen because like at the time I wasn't a comedian, now I am. And I didn't live in the UK and I'm not like famous, so like, how would that work? Anyways, it seemed like a real pipe dream, right? And this is before I started doing TBM, so I'm like looking back on what happened and kind of applying the TBM practices. I was just scrolling on Instagram one day and I saw that there was like a local improv theater and they were starting classes and without thinking, I just got my credit card and signed up for level one. And I didn't love that class, but I felt like I wanted to keep going. I ended up skipping the next class. Instead of starting level two, with the people I was with, I skipped that and I waited until the spring because I was like going through like a dark time and just didn't want to do improv. So I like ended up meeting a whole different group of people when I started level two who are now like my best friends. We all, yeah, we just started all hanging out together all the time. And one of the people on my team, I don't even remember how this happened. I do know that for his birthday, I was like, hey everybody, let's get together and like pool some money and give it to him so he can buy a camera because he wants to make video content. And so we did that and then um, he said he wanted to make his own Taskmaster and I had been given a book on like how to do Taskmaster for your friends for like Christmas or my birthday one year. So I gave that to him and then he set up the Taskmaster show for our group of friends to do and filmed it. It's on YouTube, I'll link it right here if I can. Anyways, I won, so like, and it was so funny because when I was doing the task, I was like, wow, I'm so stupid, like just really talking down about myself. And one of the other guys in the group was like, Colleen's gonna be talking down about herself and be like, oh, this is so stupid, but like she's good at stuff like this and she shouldn't be so negative about herself. I got red so bad. Anyways, that's crazy, isn't it? I mean, and all the things that happened that led up to that, it's just insane to me. So that's one crazy thing. <laughs> um, the other crazy thing is, I don't remember when I got into City Pop. City Pop is Japanese pop music from the 80s and 90s. And now that's like, 
all I listen to. I'm, I love it. I love it. It like scratches something in my brain that has never been scratched before and it feels really good. I am a music producer and a musician and I have been wanting to take those things more seriously and looking for different ways to learn more so I can like actually have a career doing that. One of the things I did was I joined this membership. I thought that it would help me to learn more about the music industry. So I went to a demo critique by the founder and like one of his friends or something. Basically like their thesis statement was that I needed to stop listening to old music because other than Japanese music, old Japanese music, all I listen to is like stuff from the 70s and 60s. They were like, you need to listen to Taylor Swift. You need to like be listening to like what's at the top of the charts today, blah, blah, blah. This advice feels wrong because I like the music that I like and I make the music that I make because it comes from the heart. I, I mean, I believe that it comes from like a divine source that we can all access. And it just felt so wrong to be trying to like optimize my art. A lot of people believe that you have to do that in order to make money. And I believe that for many years, but I do not believe that anymore. So I quit that. That's amazing for them, but I'm not gonna do that. Months later, this actually happened like a month ago. Ago, I got contacted by a music library that specializes in Asian music. And I can't say much more about this because I, of an NDA, but basically they're looking for someone who makes vintage sounding music and music that sounds like it's Japanese and from the 80s. Isn't that fucking crazy? I haven't even taken my music to where it's gonna go next. You don't even know. It's gonna be so sick. Anyways, these are all like concrete things, but there's also some stuff I manifested that was more abstract. Better body image, a kinder, gentler relationship with myself. Generally like just loving myself more, which has resulted in me doing more grown up activities like cleaning regularly, feeding myself better, scheduling and attending doctor's appointments, car maintenance, like just regular grown up shit that I like was not doing before. Also, I've really been finding my authenticity. Like I just feel like myself more of the time. I used to like be constantly acting and like thinking of like how I should act in order to like, this sounds bad, but like manipulate people into liking me or like feeling good or like wanting me to be around. So therefore I'm less drained after social activities. I enjoy socializing more cause I'm not acting constantly. I'm also way more confrontational now. Some may say that's a bad thing, but sometimes you just gotta be a bitch. Like you have to. And I have been able to like set boundaries better and have difficult conversations with people, which means that I've been able to maintain relationships with people that we had like a rough patch. And instead of being like, I'm not talking to that person anymore, like getting through that rough patch and then coming out on the other side and still being able to have our friendship, which has been really nice. And literally the first time I've done that in my life, basically, I would say I've made like a lot of progress in recovering from CPTSD, which I was originally told I could never recover from that. So that's amazing. And that's been a, a huge problem my whole adult life. And I wasn't diagnosed until my 30s. And if you've never heard of it, CPTSD is complex PTSD. You get flashbacks, but it's not like um, if you have regular PTSD and they could be like visual or like auditory flashbacks. I mean, maybe you get those. For me, it's more like I get stuck in like a really heightened emotional state. I mean, there's, there's many types of CPTSD, but the type that I have is I get stuck in a loop of extreme productivity and then like extreme bed rotting and binge eating. So I'm like out of that cycle for the first time Ever. Like I am just actually living. Wow, that's amazing actually. I mean, out of all the things that TVM has done for me, I would say that's been the biggest difference. Like I am more like consistent and just being able to like wake up every day and do things I want to do and like rest and, and eat in like an appropriate, healthy manner. I was never like that before, trust, trust me. I was not like that. I hit it well, but I was not like that before. 
So, do I recommend TBM? I think the, an the, the obvious answer is a high yes, high recommend. I think that this program would work for literally anyone. Um, it doesn't matter if you're young or old, if you're a girly or a boy or a non-binary, if you're straight or LGBTQ+. It does not matter like what your background is, if you're white or a person of color, if you're, I don't know, whatever your deal is. It, I think it would help you. It does not take that much time. I mean, it, you're looking at, I wanna say like a 30 to 45 minute time commitment, at least three, three times a week, which is kind of a lot, but I swear once you start doing it, you're like, oh, I feel a lot better. It feels really good, especially if you don't journal or do anything, like you're, your mind is gonna be blown. Um, and it's also not that expensive. There isn't one person in my life I don't think would not benefit from this program if they believed in it and if they actually stuck with it. I know most people won't do that and that's fine, but if you are interested, you could use my promo code for 15% off your membership. I am not making this video to sell this to you. I, I mean, obviously I really believe in this and this really helped me and I think it could help other people. I also haven't seen that many reviews of it like outside of their website and stuff. So, I mean, even though I have an affiliate link, this is like not sponsored or anything. This is my, how I really feel about it. And if you're like, ah, I don't know if I wanna like commit to that, they also have a podcast that's worth checking out. And I think that they do have like a free exercise on their website too. So I'll link all that stuff below. If you have questions, you can leave them as comments below. Don't forget to like this video for, you know, the algorithm God. If you wanna see more videos from me, you should subscribe. We're, we can go on this journey together. Okay, bye. Hello, governor, governor, governor. So twice a Sorry about my doggy. My doggy, doggy, dog. Peaches, what are you talking about?